How are you guys doing today? Good? Oh, my name is Koryanka Kilcher. I am Quechua Huachipaita Indian from Peru. And uh, there are many similarities our indigenous tribes share in regard regards to our culture and our struggles. Even though that our tribes are thousands of miles apart from each other. Today, I want to highlight the importance indigenous issues have to all of us as humanity. Traditionally, indigenous peoples around the world have lived in harmony with Mother Earth, and their lifestyles are based on environmentally sustainable principles and practices without exploiting and destroying their children's future. Therefore, indigenous people's wisdom, knowledge, and way of life has absolute contemporary relevance to modern society. Indigenous people sit on the front lines of globalization's expansion and are the gatekeepers of the last pristine places on Earth, where resources like forests, minerals, water, genetic diversity are still abundant. In the never-ending quest for corporate profit, these resources are ferociously sought after, often without assuming any social or environmental responsibility, and with devastating consequences for the environment as well as the local communities. Projects that exploit their lands, natural resources, and cultures are often not done with their consent. Their sustainable ways of de developing natural resources are being dismissed and ecosystems, their ecosystems are being polluted. Therefore, we all need to honor and support indigenous people's struggle as they are the frontline soldiers and they're the gatekeepers. Indigenous people have traditional land claims for 18 to 24% of the Earth's land surface. Indigenous territories overlap remaining biodiverse hotspots, and indigenous peoples inhabit over 85% of protected areas, 85%. So you see, that's why indigenous peoples need the world's solidarity and support now more than ever before to defend these land claims so they can hold them in trust for all the world's unborn generations. Throughout the efforts of the International Indigenous Peoples Movement and their dynamic partnerships with the United Nations system, the struggle of the people for cultural survival, human rights, development, and peace have finally been brought to the attention of the international community. And the passing of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is a historic day for Indigenous peoples and indeed for humanity as a whole. It marks a major victory for Indigenous peoples who actively took part in crafting this declaration. But the challenges to ensure the respect, protection, and fulfillment of Indigenous peoples' rights it's just begun. We need to make sure that while looking into the future, we ensure that human rights and, the environment and environmental abuses and destructions are no longer committed in the name of economic development. We cannot speak about economic development without talking about basic rights to lands and resources culture and identity and self-determination. We cannot eat, drink, or breathe money or profit. Some things don't have a price, but they do have a value. Environmental sustainability and a true commitment towards universal dignity and basic human rights is the only true form of evolution and human development. There is a clear connection between globalization, pressing environmental issues, and human rights abuses. 
Indigenous peoples' rights to free prior and informed consent and full participation in decisions which directly or indirectly affect their life must not be ignored and violated. As long as Indigenous peoples and our environment are paying the price for multinational companies' profit and greed, the term glo globalization does not work for me. In the name of development, we have become the leaders of environmental destruction. And we seem to be oblivious to the fact that the pressing issues facing our planet today, they're not confined within borders. I've dedicated all my media attention and this entire last year to speaking out for pa pressing environmental issues, indigenous people's rights, and the need for corporate accountability. It is time that we ask ourselves, how do we have to be in order to see the world we want to see? It is time that we make sure that pressing environmental issues don't suffer because of politics and greed. We have to stay true and humble in, into what it really is going to take to protect and respect Mother Earth. I ask myself, why does it seem that our relationship with the environment is seen as an obstacle to progress rather than a necessity to progress? And why are we so readily willing to scrutinize things which are profitable to humanity as a whole, whereas ideas that have benefit only to a small entity or group often seem to be assumed by many as more legitimate? And what is it in our human nature that leads us to readily let greed win against justice? It doesn't make sense. As a young person, I'm still trying to wrap my head around eco-minded, material, privileged, carbon sinners who try to neutralize their environmental footprints by indulging in the carbon offset business. Like, it's like mad diet pills for extravagant consumption. <laughs> really. It's not a simple matter of ad campaigning induced consumption choices like environmentally friendly light bulbs and biofuels. We cannot just swallow an anti-carbon pill and continue to rape Mother Earth. The multimedia campaign against global warming is causing a climate of intimidation and fear, benefiting again from profit-driven investors and corporations who are looking to turn the demand for green products into green money. The Western world's growing demand for mega production of biofuels is already causing serious damage. Some of our biofuels are far, far from being sustainable. And again, in the name of consumption, consumer demand and corporate greed, we are compromising biodiversity and fueling human rights violations. For example, palm oil and soy plantations are exploiting into the planet most biodiverse ecosystems. Soy has become the largest contributor to deforestation of the Amazon rainforest and its surrounding wooded savanna, while palm oil plantations are expanding at a rate of 2.5 million acres per year into the tropical forests of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Papua New Guinea. And then there's also catalyzation. Deforestation in some of the world's most biodiverse regions is making way for cattle pastures. In Brazil and other biodiverse regions, livestock account for 30% of the Earth's entire land surface. And it accounts for respectively 37% of all human-induced methane. According to a new report published by the United Nations Food Agriculture Organization, you see 
The destruction of the world's rainforest is driven by a complex web of social and economic forces, not only fuel, but while we are living in a time which demands us to urgently pay attention to such things as climate change and global warming, we also live in a time where there is a clear climate change and shift in human consciousness and a global warming of hearts. All around the world, working towards environmental sustainability and universal human rights is a gift and a blessing, not only for the future of this world, but also to our own development as human beings by helping us define our identity and what it truly means to be human.